Hi, I'm Steve Whaley with Bluebird, and welcome to a Bird's Eye View podcast. In this episode, we're going to be demystifying the alternative fuel buses that run on propane for their maintenance and their service. And here with me today is Mario Genovese. He's the Director of Customer Success at one of our longstanding partners, Roush Cleantech. Mario, thanks for coming and welcome. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be here. All right. With a with a with a title like Director of Customer Success, you, you've got some explaining to do here. T- tell me exactly what the uh, the Director of Customer Success does at Roush Clean Tech. Yeah. So uh, being the Director of Customer Success at Roush Clean Tech, uh, I have the pleasure of working with a wonderful team. Um, that really our goal ultimately is to make sure that our customers are, as the name implies, successful with the operation of their products once they put them into service. Um, So my team helps manage all of the service, warranty, parts, training, essentially everything that's after sales support for our alternative fuel buses. Okay. So, you know, most most of student transportation, you know, we we have, you know, 400,000 buses that are still running on diesel out there. And people are very comfortable with what they know and usually a little bit more uncomfortable with what they don't know. So when we transition over to a new powertrain like like propane, what what is it that you do? What what in your background has prepared you to to helping them make that transition and you know taking the mystery out of the unknown? What where did you come from? Yeah, yeah. So I've been with Roush for 13 years now. Um, it's funny. I actually starting you know going way back uh, tinkering on anything with a motor, anything with an engine, kind of got me excited. So. That's my background, whether it was snowmobiles, four-wheelers, lawn tractors, you name it, I have my hands in a little bit of everything. Um, so coming out of high school, I had to make the decision, right, okay, what am I going to go do with myself, with, with my career, what do I want to do? And uh, what's here is automotive, I really like that. And I said, okay, that seems like a long-term thing that's going to be there in the future. People got to get around, transportation's a, a big deal, right? So I actually went to school, um, got an automotive engineering degree, and then started at Roush in 2011. Um, when I started at Roush, actually, believe it or not, I started as an intern. Um, I was a service intern, and I was tinkering once again on uh, propane tanks and fuel rails, injectors, fuel lines, all the different parts of the system. Um, I spent about five years in the field, actually, for Roush, uh, working on vehicles, helping with you know troubleshooting, diagnostics, maybe looking at emerging concerns if they came about, right? Because mm-hmm. Propane, albeit the third most common fuel in the world behind gasoline and diesel, as, as you well know, is still a relatively newer and emerging technology out there in the field, right? So definitely had its growing pains starting out of the gate. So a lot of that type of stuff and then eventually transitioned into the management side. So like you said, we very well understand, okay, this, this is something newer to fleets. It's something that's different, uh, especially if what they're used to or comfortable with is gasoline and diesel right, which are the primaries. So how do you set them up for success with the operation of those vehicles? Is again, you make sure that when, you know, the vehicle has a concern, they have somewhere to take it for repair. Their technicians have access to training. Um, they know how to maintain the vehicles. And once you can kind of do all that, show them the way it, it really clicks, and they say, wow, okay, this is, this is a great technology, this is a great fuel, and we're saving money. Right? Sure. All right, so, you know, the, the typical fleet where their, their service techs are used to diesel, how do, you, how do you start the transition? How, how's that education process start? And what are the differences between a diesel compression ignition engine and a, a, a propane engine that's, that's running on it? How, how do you get them started and, and where do you make the switch? Is it easier? Is it harder? Yeah, so really it's, you know, when you look at diesel mechanics, right, they're used to that, you know, non-spark ignited engine. Um, It has different properties than that of a gasoline engine. But usually, just being in the industry, you'll have mechanics that are somewhat familiar with gasoline engine operation. Mm -hmm. So usually try to pivot a little bit to that and say, okay, you know, if you just think about your standard gasoline engine that's in your everyday passenger car, truck, or van that's out Mm -hmm. there, right? Whether it's a six-cylinder, an eight-cylinder, all the basic uh, principles of how that engine operates on gasoline, apply to that when it runs on propane, right? So it's still a spark ignited engine. Um, You would look for the same type of things with, you know, drivability complaints on a gasoline engine that you would on a propane engine, whether it's, you know, it's a crank no start. We have a cylinder misfire. Uh, The engine's running lean. You're going to go look at all the same type of things. Okay, am I getting Mm -hmm. fuel? Am I getting spark? 
Um, you know, why is this engine not firing? Why is it not starting? Mm-hmm. You just have to understand the concepts around propane. It is a refrigerant, right? It's a pressurized gas, and it operates a little bit higher than a gasoline fuel system. But once you can kind of piece those things together and say, okay, I, I really am just working on a gasoline engine. Okay, yeah, well, some let, higher pressures. Let's right? do that. So we, we, we have a 7.3 liter, you know, Ford gasoline engine is as one of our four you know powertrain options um what's different from the the 7.3 liter you know gasoline engine and the 7.3 liter propane engine yeah that's that's a great question so going down to the core the base engine itself is is identical between okay. gasoline 7.3 liter and the propane um so your bore your stroke your compression ratio all your internal mm-hmm. lubricated components of the engine are all the same the only difference that a propane or compressed natural gas engine is going to have versus its gasoline counterpart is what's called the gaseous prep cylinder head package. Mm. Um, so it's hardened intake and exhaust valves and seats, uh, upgraded valve stem seals to deal with the lesser lubricity of the alternative fuels. Like a little bit propane. drier. Propane, yeah. Propane's a little bit drier than, than, than gasoline. Exactly. A little okay. bit drier than gas. And, and, and you have a little bit of a different fuel tank that goes in there. You know, ga- <laughs> yeah. gasoline tank is, is, is going to be a little bit different. So... Well, what, what's different about a propane tank? I mean, most people are familiar with the propane tanks that they, they have for their grill cylinders out on the back patio. Uh, but what's what's different about the tank that goes in a, in a bus? Yeah, so the, the propane fuel tanks that we put in the school buses are, you know, extremely tough and very reliable. They're, they're meant to be in a vehicle and to do that job, right? They're they're ASME certified um, fuel tank weldments, which means that they meet all the crash test standards, all of the uh, regulations that you need to have forward to be able to operate it in a motor vehicle, and they're rated for the life cycle of the bus. Um, they oh, so there's not a life cycle. Uh, inspection on a frequency. I, n- I know we had to do that with CNG on, on the carbon fiber wrap tanks, but that's not the case. It's for the life of the vehicle. Correct. Yep, they're rated for the life of the vehicle, and the reason behind some of those inspections is because CNG tanks are actually a composite, a synthetic material, mm-hmm. and they hold a lot higher pressure than propane, right? You can have over 35, 3600 PSI in a CNG tank, to whereas our propane tanks uh, have a maximum uh, allowable pressure of about 375 PSI. So you're talking a lot less. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're carbon steel uh, tanks that are just over a, a quarter inch thick plate steel that's rolled into the weldment um, and, you know, powder coated to be in that environment that's underneath of a school bus so they're made for the rural roads made for the climates that they run in essentially everywhere that you can run a gasoline or a diesel bus you can run a propane bus okay all right so the tanks are a little bit different we have them in between the frame rails you know kind of south of the differential they're well protected uh, but then we have you know the the same fuel line that's going from the tank up to the engine um so is what kind of differences are there in that in that gasoline version before I talk about the differences in diesel is there is it is, are the lines in the same place do we have filtration in there too or yeah yeah so the uh, all of the propane fuel lines that run from the tank um, up to the engine to the fuel rails to be distributed amongst the cylinders are all stainless steel uh, whether they're stainless steel hard line sections or if you see a flexible line because there are certain points where you need to flex over maybe from a frame rail to get up above a transmission or something like mm-hmm. that. Even the flexible ones are a stainless inner with a, a nylon braid over top to uh, provide abrasion protection. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they route right in place of where you know the OEM or traditional fuel lines would route uh, inboard mm-hmm. of the frame rail. And there uh, are a couple of filters on the propane system that are actually very important from a maintenance side. Um, really, those filters are your primary maintenance point on the propane system. And you have one that's uh, that's in the filling line in between the fuel door of the bus and the tank mm-hmm. that's made to capture any potential debris or foreign you know, material that has made its way through the supply chain that could get into that tank. Mm-hmm. And you have another filter that's external of the fuel tank in between the tank and the engine that is made just again to further refine and filter before it makes it to the injection how, system. How often do these, that, that's on the preventative maintenance side, how often do those things get replaced? Yeah, so those filters are rated for 50,000 driven miles, um, or if you start to see a reduction in their flow rate uh, before then, right? So if you have a bus where you're fueling it, let's let's maybe say, and you kind of know, okay, I'm, I'm fueling it 10 gallons a minute. That's pretty standard for my buses, for my fleet. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, a bus or two starts dropping down to, you know, eight gallons a minute or four gallons a minute. The first thing to go do is look at is, okay, could my filter be yeah. clogged? Tell you it's, it's, it's doing it. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget to check out the new Bluebird merch store. We've got hats, wearables, even plush buses. 
You can check it out at the URL here listed. So let's get back to the difference then between our propane and diesel. Um, what's different about the, 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 the propane version? It's because it's, our buses are the same. You know, if it's a type C bus, you know, it's going to be the exact same bus, whether it's on gasoline, propane, EV, or, or diesel. But more so, what's not on a propane bus that we have on diesel now? Yeah, and that's, that's, a, great, um, that's a great question, and that's really where propane starts to shine. Right. It has a lot of uh, benefits to it. But when you look at, like you said, what's not there, the after treatment side of things with a propane system. Right. So so being that you're running essentially a gasoline engine um, with the gaseous prep cylinder head package that is converted over to run on propane, the exhaust system, as far as the catalytic converter, the oxygen sensors is identical to that of a gasoline system. There's no added okay. componentry or anything that's needed. Um, it's the exact same because a lot of everything we do is done with the software side of things to recalibrate that engine to run on propane instead of gasoline. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you compare that to what's, you know, in diesel nowadays and what's coming in the future, when you look at some of these after treatment systems and the DEF fluid and the EGRs and all of the, the nomenclature that you can go on with, mm -hmm. right, none of that exists on a propane school bus. So no diesel exhaust fluid, not, none of the particulate matter filters because you know we, we we know how much fun that is to 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 pay for the replacement of those things that doesn't exist on on the propane version no no it doesn't and when you start to talk about replacing some of those components from um you know definitely once you're out of the warranty side of things mm -hmm. and you as a school district or a fleet have to start to pay for those type of things they, they're very very expensive Right. Mm -hmm. And if you compare the cost of um, I think we got a quote, you can replace the entire 7.3 liter engine um, in one of the propane school buses for the price it would be to replace like a turbo on some of these diesel engines. Now, and it's we are later, naturally aspirated right? on these 7.3 liter engines, too. So there isn't yeah. that 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 turbo. OK, so we have a, a, a lot less, you know, capital expenditure for those, you know, si system components of that diesel exhaust system. But uh, then the maintenance of it is is cheaper too. Um, so, <clears throat> what what does it take for a diesel mechanic to learn how to operate, you know, and, and maintain uh, and, and service this this propane engine? What how do you how do you get them from being a diesel mechanic to a to a propane mechanic? Yeah, so I, I would say again, you know, a lot of the you know the common automotive principles still apply to engine operation, you know, diagnostics, drivability. There are differences, right, between even diesel and just gasoline operation. But I think where, you know, again, back to the, the team at Roush, the customer success team, where we really shine is by having the ability to offer up training to the mechanics so that they can start to bridge that gap between diesel and propane, right? Okay, so how, do, how does that happen? I, you know, a school district works through their Bluebird dealer and, you know, hey, they're, they're convinced they want to get into this money-saving, emission-reducing, you know, alternative. Um, what's, what's the first step? Um, you know, they, they order buses. Do they, do they get some pre-training? Do they, do they, you know, how, how, do, how does all that unfold? Yeah. So we, we offer training, I would say in like three different tiers, mm -hmm. um, to mechanics and really anybody that's interested in learning about working on the systems. And what I would recommend is, and you can sign up right online on our website at roushcleantech.com is you start out kind of with that first tier of training, which is web-based training. So that mm -hmm. takes you through everything from, you know, what is propane? You know, you and I know very well what it is, but a lot of people don't. Sure. Um, you know, what is the fuel? How is it used in an automotive application? How does an engine run on it? And then it kind of takes you through some more modules that will take you through system operation. You know, what are the components? Mm -hmm. Some of the things we talk about, tanks, injectors, valves, pumps, how do all those things work, right? How much does that cost? Um, so there's no charge for the web-based training on our, okay. our website. Yeah, so it's all, it's all free because, you know, we, again, you know, back to propane being a little bit of a, a newer technology in a lot of these fleets, we want people to be safe with it. And we want to make sure that they understand how it works, apply the common sense factors to it, and know how to work on it inside their shop. We don't want any accidents, right? So we don't charge for any of that training. Okay, so you have the online training first. They can start that, you know, begin, or they can even do some investigation into this. Even before they purchase. Before they purchase to find right. out a little bit more about it. What's the next stage after that? Yeah, so generally speaking, we like people to do the uh, the web-based training just because it gets their feet wet a little bit and they understand some of the concepts and, again, more about the fuel, more about the system. Mm -hmm. And then kind of the second tier of training would be where we actually come out on site and we host an in-person training event. 
So that's about a half day session. Uh, we either like to do those at our Bluebird dealerships. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. they can get multiple customers to kind of come in and centralize and host a training. Mm -hmm. Seems to work really well. Or we will go out directly to in customers to school districts, um, you know, and train their mechanics, especially if they're going to be working on the systems. Okay. Um, and again, that's about a half day session. We we do a little bit of classroom, a little bit of PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Then we get a little bit more hands on with like a bus walk around. We'll actually hook up uh, diagnostic equipment to the vehicle, show the mechanics, you know, hey, you know, you're looking at the propane fuel pressure that's in the fuel rail right now. Here's that value on mm -hmm. your, your scan tool, just like you would look at it on, you know, a diesel engine or a gasoline engine mm -hmm. um, and, and go a little bit more advanced. So Okay, so you have the, the, the web-based training that anybody can do at any time, uh, coordinating through your dealership, you know, to come out and, and, and you'll work with them to get them, get them started. Um, is there anything going on at your place, though? Yeah, so so the the third tier, kind of our most advanced level of training, we call them uh, Roush Factory Workshops. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, on the website, RoushCleanTech.com, you can sign up for those. And what we do is we put together our most advanced level of training that's uh, at our headquarters back in Livonia, Michigan. We have the mechanics, uh, you know, fly up for a two-day course. There's no charge for this training, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just your room and board and your flights to get you to and from. And the whole concept of that training is, okay, in theory, you've gone through the basics. You kind of understand propane. You understand it in an engine. You understand the system. And maybe you've worked on the vehicles now. You've done some repairs. Maybe you changed a pump or some injectors or whatever it may be, right? And now you come up to our place where we have just more capability at Roush to have vehicles there and equipment. And we can do less, you know, classroom instruction and more hands-on. Mm -hmm. Right. So by the end of that two day course, all service techs like the hands on training. I mean, we have classroom stuff that, you know, gets, you know, ready for that, you know, being out in the in the service bay. But that's where it really shines. Exactly. And so by the end of the, that two day course, right, they've, you know, they've went inside tanks. They've changed fuel pumps out. They've disassembled fuel rails and injectors. Uh, we've transferred fuel because that's a big question we get is, OK, well, if you have to go inside of a tank, how do you get all the fuel out? Mm -hmm. So we actually demonstrate and do a transfer at our place. And then it kind of culminates on the second day with we'll take a couple of vehicles and essentially bug them <laughs> to induce faults that the mechanics may encounter in the real mm -hmm. world, right? So they might go out to a propane bus and it's just sitting there cranking, but it won't start. Mm -hmm. We hand them the diagnostic equipment. We hand them the service manual, everything that they've learned over the last day and a half and say, okay, here you go. Go ahead and diagnose this bus, right? And obviously we're there to aid them, but it's very much apply what you've learned. So that, that's been great. Um, we've been doing those for the better part of eight to 10 years now, I would say. Mm -hmm. And um, mechanics, they, they really love coming up and going through that one. No doubt. No doubt. Now, how many service centers are there nationwide uh, for, for folks to get their propane buses serviced at? Yeah, so we, um, we have kind of three different types of service centers out there. We have obviously the Bluebird dealerships. Um, we have independent repair facilities, so a lot of the mom and pops and different places like that. And then, you know, being a Ford powertrain, we have Ford dealerships that are on board. Uh, across the United States and Canada, we have just over about 700 public uh, service locations if you combine all three of those entities together. Okay. Well, terrific. Well, I can see why they have you as the director of customer success, Mario. Really appreciate you coming here. Is there anything that I've left out that you, you'd want a school district or a school, you know, contractor to know about the maintenance and service of, of propane vehicles? I mean, I would just say, you know, try not to be too apprehensive about it and mm -hmm. kind of think about, you know, the way that the world's headed and the way of the future. Mm -hmm. Look at where diesel and gasoline may go in the future and what, what those emission standards, you know, might come to. And talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to people that have tried it, because there's a lot of great success stories out there, mm -hmm. not only with, um, you know, cleaner buses that are better for our environment and for our children, but you're also saving money and you're reducing complexity when you talk about a lot of these other systems out there. Terrific. Well, thank you for being with us. And that's a bird's eye view of demystifying the maintenance and service of our alternative fuel vehicles that run on propane.